Our next guest can be seen at the Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis, November 2nd and 3rd. Please welcome the very funny Josh Johnson! Cool. <laughs> How y'all doing? Everybody good? Okay, I wish I could say the same. <laughs> no, it's just I'm getting older and I can feel it. This is rough. This is I'm turned into like an old black man, but now this is too soon. <laughs> Dude, two days after my birthday, somebody just said something I agreed with. I know where I was like, mm-hmm. That is unacceptable. <laughs> I am 40 years too young for that. A full civil rights, mm-hmm, out of my throat. <laughs> Every day I'm doing like old black man things. I'll just see a cute couple, start giving them advice. I was at a coffee shop, I saw two people, they look good together. I was like, y'all take care of each other now. Like, Who is this for? I saw a little kid on a park bench, shoulders hunched, looking like he didn't make the team or something. I just ran up behind him, I was like, so you just gonna quit? Like this is... <laughs> Starting to say sayings that aren't real. My buddy had a bad day, he was telling me about it. And when he got done, I was like, well, Bottom of the shoe ain't nothing without the top of the foot. Like, I don't even know what that means. I'm just sort of saying things. You know? And my friends have been dating, and I've, I've watched them as they date, and I've noticed a lot of what people call red flags, right? And people have to look out for red flags early. Like, ladies, you know red flags that we don't even register. You really do. I was at a club with my friend, he had a real rom-com experience. He saw this woman across the club and he said, he was like, the light was just shining on her a little extra, you know? And so he made his way towards her and the dance floor was parting. People were getting out of the way as he was walking up to her. And he walks right up to her, he lays his thickest game. He's like, hey, how you doing? Maybe I'll buy you a drink or something. And she turned around and she looked him up and down. She was like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> No, that's not for me. That's not what we do. And he, he tried one more time. He was like, why can't I buy you a drink? Get to know you. Maybe we might like each other. And she looked him up and down again, and she said, your shoes. <laughs> I know that sounds super rude. It sounds vapid, materialistic, but I'm not going to lie. I'm on her side. <laughs> because when he looked down, both his shoes were untied. And it's like, yeah, that's a red flag. <laughs> There's no better way to walk up to a woman and be like, you're gonna have to take care of me eventually than to walk up with both your shoes untied. <laughs> How'd he even make it across the dance floor without tripping? And I'm trying to be fair here. One shoe could happen to anybody. We're all human. Both shoes have not happened since the third grade. <laughs> If you approach a woman with both your shoes untied, you might as well walk up with a glass of milk in one hand and a cookie in the other, talk about, you wanna be friends? Cause that's what you look and sound like when both your shoes are untied. I'm very blessed to be here, by the way. I, I, this is absolutely amazing. I, I grew up in Louisiana and I feel like I had an incredible childhood, even though I don't come from money, you know? And I was having a conversation with my friend. He gave me a really interesting metric. He said, you can tell how good someone's childhood was in the States by how long they believed in Santa. <laughs> if they were told about Santa and they believed in Santa, how long they believed is how coddled, you know what I mean? Just how sheltered they were. Because we all remember that kid that was like 15. <laughs> And Christmas comes around, he's like, I can't wait for Santa. You're like, oh, no. Oh, they too good to him. This is terrible. I had an incredible childhood, but I'm not going to lie. I stopped believing in Santa pretty young because when you don't have a good money situation, you usually don't have a good living situation. So my neighborhood was really rough. And when I was eight years old, I saw Santa get robbed. <laughs> and I started asking questions. I was like, how does he make it to every house in the entire world in one night, but he can't get away from these dudes because he is getting whooped. <laughs> I 
I, I had to call 911 at the beginning of this year, and uh, I appreciate just about everything that these people do. They are literally heroes, you know? The only thing I don't appreciate is how calm they are when they pick up. That feels disrespectful <laughs> to my situation, because I'm not calling to chat. Something traumatic just happened in front of me, and then I call, and they pick up, and they're like, 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> It's like, no, my tax dollars cannot be going to that department store customer service level energy, all right? I'm freaking out. I need you freaking out, okay? It would feel better to call 911 and be like, oh, my goodness, and they're like, what is it? That would feel so much better. Because don't get me wrong, I get it. They're calm so that I'm calm. Because if I'm calm, I'm a better communicator, and they can more effectively help me with my situation. I understand why they do it. It just doesn't feel good. Because <laughs> then you tell them everything that's going wrong, and then they repeat your emergency back to you like a fast food order. <laughs> There's on the phone like, so you telling me that your friend fell out, and now he on the ground, and you don't know if he breathing. And so you put a spoon in front of his face. And the spoon fogged up so he might be breathing. But that might also be your breath because you were too close to the spoon. I'm like, just send somebody, please. And nobody talks about it, but if 911 doesn't believe you, they can just hang up. That's a real thing. If they don't take you serious, they think it's a prank, they can just hang up. And I know that because when I was eight years old, I called 911 to tell them that Santa was getting whooped. <laughs> and they hung up in my face. They were like, so you telling me that Santa, sir, we have real things to do here. <laughs> Guys, I'm Josh Johnson. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great night. Club in St. Louis, November 2nd and 3rd. We'll be right back, everybody. Come on back. Hey, hey.